We can all remember the crazy storms last winter that brought really intense flooding and drenched rain and windstorms. Now it's an El Nino year, but scientists say that does not mean we're in for another extraordinarily wet winter. El Nino is characterized by warmer conditions in the tropical Pacific that can lead to rain and storms for California, but not always. And if El Nino does end up causing winter storms, Southern and Central California are likely to feel more of an impact than the Bay Area. Well. The man to sort that all out for us <laughs> is Paul Hagen, because I'm going to be honest, that's not really my forte, but I know he understands all of it, and thank goodness you're here. Yeah, we'll try to break it down, because it is complicated. As you mentioned, the typical pattern that we associate with El Nino is for what are the normal conditions in the southern half of California, really emphasizing Southern California in particular, because that warm ocean water in the Pacific displaces the jet streams, the storm tracks that carry storm systems across the country and around the entire northern hemisphere, around the entire world. So why is it complicated? Because there are other factors at play. And to understand those, we have to look at the entire planet. So let's bring in our virtual reality globe. And I do have our sea surface temperature anomalies plotted on the virtual reality globe. So that basically means how warm is the ocean water compared to normal. And you see that bright stripe that extends out from the west coast of South America all the way into the Pacific. That is the fingerprint of El Nino. And in this case, it is a strong El Nino event already, likely to strengthen even further as we head into the month of December. The complicating part is that it's not the only factor that we are tracking in terms of those warm ocean temperatures. There's also a big blob of very warm ocean water for this time of year in the North Pacific. And on the other side of the planet, there's a whole big area in the Atlantic Ocean that is much, much warmer than normal. So instead of the one roadblock of the warm El Nino waters rearranging the storm track, we have a whole obstacle course of different things at play trying to push the weather in different directions and trying to unravel exactly the impact that they're going to have is extremely tricky. The Climate Prediction Center does their best, and their latest outlook for the month of December just came out today, pointing to a wetter than normal pattern for the Pacific Northwest, not for the Bay Area, not for Southern California. Now, as you look a little farther down the line, the three-month outlook for December, January, and February does show more of that El Nino fingerprint with wetter than normal conditions anticipated for most of California, including not only the Bay Area, but also Southern California, where that impact tends to be more emphasized. But I was just looking at some of the long-range forecast model data, which doesn't give us day-by-day -day rain chances, but just kind of adds it up over the course of a season. These seasonal model outputs indicate that we're in for what could be a dry December overall, and then maybe we catch up to near average, maybe even slightly above average precipitation once January and February roll around. We'll keep you updated as we head through winter. But again, the fact that it's not just El Nino, but all these other factors at play really throws some sand into the gears of what we're trying to figure out.